And as we speak, we see another fall when it comes to the Aussie 10-year bond yield as well. In fact, it's down to the lowest since February. This just being part of what we see on a global stage. What does this tell you about the market's expectations of demand going forward? Well, what, uh, uh, what, uh, what, what we are seeing now in the, in the market and especially looking at the equity market on the, um, on, o over, the, over the last week is that uh, you have really two kind of concern. One is on the gross, gross picking and the other one is on inflation. But uh, uh, what we have seen, for instance, looking at the uh, Russell 2000 uh, on the performance over the last week is uh, uh, the big growth is uh, starting to uh, become uh, more uh, concerning element and uh, uh, this is uh, actually uh, one of the elements which has uh, pushed us to reduce the uh, allocation into risk asset into our uh, global allocation. So, so you have inflation but you have also uh, this uh, growth element and the earnings season uh, is going to be a very important uh, element and possibly a catalyst to see whether uh, we could have uh, another upward leg or whether we will have some sideway market. When it comes to the inflation debate, there's increasing concern that the Fed, other central banks might be taking this kind of, you know, rose-tinted view, right? I want you to take a listen to what the Pe PepsiCo CFO told us. I'm not going to assume it's going to be transitory. I'm going to assume it's probably going to be around for a little while. And then uh, we'll build our plans around that. If we happen to get surprised with inflation lowering itself more quickly, that's great. We'll, we'll, we'll adjust to that. But right now, I'm assuming it's going to be with us through the better part of next year. So this is just the latest in a number of corporate voices, you know, increasingly saying that they're not viewing potentially inflation as being, as being transitory. How does that weigh on the earnings outlook then? OK, so. Uh well, you, you, you have the second quarter, and uh, uh, of course you will have uh, some massive base effect. So, uh, so that means that uh, uh, the earnings are going to be extremely strong uh, for the second quarter, but what's going to be important is the message that we get for 2022. Uh, and here, uh, for instance, when I am observing what's happening on Asia equity, we start to see uh, some, uh, some earnings momentum rolling over. Uh, some downgrade for 2022, even in some star market like uh, uh, Taiwan, like uh, Korea. And so uh, this is where uh, we have uh, probably to be a little bit cautious when it comes to, uh, to equity on the longer term, on the, on the 6 to 12 month view. So Frank, I'm curious, you know, um, China's GDP is moving along fine, slowing a bit. We have a kind of a mixed view of that economy. You're ready to add Chinese stocks to your portfolio uh, also at a time when there's a lot of people who feel uh, some people I've talked to recently who that the t the valuations are high it really you know it's one thing to own Chinese stocks but add to them why do you like it okay so uh, yes we we have uh, added uh, China equity in our global allocation and you have some reason on that and uh, uh, looking at the driver of China equity of course you have uh, the economic condition and here uh, well, we do expect some slowdown in the second half, but uh, what we are seeing uh, is uh, some economy which is starting to grow steady, which is continuing to grow steadily and you don't have any collapse. You have a second very important element, which is uh, the deleveraging policy uh, and the tightening. And here uh, we have some indications that uh, uh, we are, uh, well, we are seeing some, uh, some sign of easing. And then you have uh, something which matters probably the most, according to me, uh, which is uh, the, uh, the, the regulation tightening in the in okay. China internet, where you have a lot of skepticism, right. and uh, where you start to see the valuation uh, becoming uh, more, I would not say attractive, but at least much more affordable. So, okay. so you have a number of elements. Uh, at a time where you see some peak growth uh, right. happening in the U.S., which is making us becoming uh, more constructive on China equity. You know, a lot of focus on Japan this week as the Olympics get underway and there's cases now in the Olympic Village. But looking out, you think you see a positive surprise in the second half. Is Japan going to get its, the, the virus under control? Is that one of the reasons you're positive? Well, you, you have... Uh, 
well, you, you had one of the reasons for the underperformance was the very slow vaccination rate. And this is something that is going to be passed uh, behind us. Uh, then the second half, uh, you will see uh, the uh, election, which uh, uh, have been uh, generally some, uh, some element for uh, a better second half. And you have some seasonal effect uh, okay. on the Japanese equity market, especially since the quanti quantitative easing. Mm -hmm. And the fourth quarter is generally a better one. So, so we could see a better second half, and especially uh, in the last quarter of the year.